Hi everyone, my name is Pamela Nuri, Head of Expedition Operations at Noble Caledonia, and today we are talking about packing for the temperate areas. When we say temperate, we mean the British and Irish Isles, Iceland, Norway, the White Sea, Patagonia, Alaska, and New Zealand. We're generally going to these places in the summer, so we hope and expect to have some nice, warm, balmy days, maybe even wearing our shorts, a t-shirt, and a peak cap, but of course, you can always have that last little cold snap at the end of the winter um, or the first one before the autumn. You can get some lot of rain, cold, bitterly cold days as well. And so packing can be quite a challenge to sort of cover this diversity of conditions within one day. Your whole cruise could be a really quite cold or really quite warm um, or just on an individual day have that diversity of conditions and still have an efficient packing strategy so um, let's give you our top tips for what you should pack um, in this sort of area. So first of all, you want to be able to prepare yourself for the worst, those really cold, bitter and wet days. Um, and these can crop up unexpectedly, like I said. So you want to have your windproof and waterproof layers, the overpants and the jacket. And these are mandatory in the Zodiac, but always recommended for when we go ashore. For temperate regions, most of the itineraries are dry landings, which means you're either walking down the gangway or landing onto a jetty where you don't get your feet wet necessarily. So your shoes that are day-to-day -day comfortable for onboard and ashore with decent tread for some walks and hikes are going to be fine with a range of medium and some thicker socks is going to be perfect for you. Just check your itinerary because most of the time our temperate cruises don't include too many wet landings but there might just be one or two and keep in mind that things change if we have weather and we didn't go to the place we intended to go we might have this amazing opportunity to go somewhere that we don't normally go but it happens to be a wet landing so it's not a bad idea to always have preparation for a wet landing meaning you're stepping off the zodiac into the water not a bad idea to be prepared for that scenario now, the ideal thing is to have a pair of knee-high rubber boots um, or wellies, as you say, and uh, a lot of people already own a pair like this. However, of course, this is a bit of a hassle to occupy your bag with something biggish and heavy-ish and something that we might not use or we might only use once. So something to look out for, keep in the back of your mind, are these types of overboots. And overboots are available from a couple of brands now. It's something that you just slip your normal footwear into and you basically make your normal footwear become a waterproof, wet landing type of shoe. Still make sure you get something with decent tread though, because as you can imagine, a lot of those wet landings will be on two sort of boulders or smooth rocks. And you do want a little bit of tread for getting those few steps just out of the water. In terms of trousers, your day-to-day -day pants and trousers that you would wear at home in your normal life are going to be fine for temperate regions. And you do get those great technical trousers that zip off so that you have the shorts, um, the roll up to the knee length and the full length trousers all in one. And those are, of course, a very efficient way to take multiple types of items. And the technical fabrics nowadays are fantastic because they're both keep you warm and don't let you overheat. So it's protection from the sun and the cold. Same for shirts, you wanna bring a range of t-shirts, polo shirts, long sleeve shirts, the normal sorts of things that you might wear in your day-to-day -day life are gonna be good for we wearing on board and wearing ashore. Nice thing if you do a lot of expeditions is to invest in one of those technical shirts because again, they're very cleverly designed nowadays so they give you protection from the sun and protection from the cold. And they usually got a couple of clever features like your roll up sleeves and your zip and your wrap up collar for the sun as well. For your warm layers, your cardigans and your uh, jerseys, which will be made of wool, down, fleece or whatever. But the great thing that we recommend is always to have the zip down front. And that means it can layer, you can open it up when you're overheating and you can close it up when you're getting cold. Your gilets and your waistcoats make great warmth layers because they really are a good balance between warm and cold. 
not everyone feels that they need scarves and gloves in the temperate regions. So a lightweight glove is probably enough for many people, just the wool or fleece um, lightweight sort of gloves that you might have in your day-to-day -day lives will be enough. Except for a place like Alaska, which is notorious for uh, downpour, uh, for rain, and then you probably want a waterproof glove um, in addition to these lightweight gloves. Instead of a scarf, we often recommend a neck gaiter because this is not going to flap around or blow off. Um, it stays on quite easily. You can pull it up over your head to give it extra warmth and also nowadays act as a good facial covering. For headgear, everyone feels the cold differently. So a lot of people might just be happy with a peak cap to account for sun on those warmer days. Other people always feel the cold. They want to cover their ears. And so a beanie is the way to go. And you do get beanies with a built-in peak cap now, which is a great sort of compromise or mixture of both features. You'll have your accessories along, uh, bring your camera, don't forget the accessories that go with your camera, your chargers, your memory cards, etc. Binoculars, it's always a good idea to think about getting a harness for your binoculars instead of a neck strap. You might wear your binoculars a lot more and on long walks and hikes or out on deck when you're on an expedition cruise compared to how you use them at home and a harness is more comfortable than it hanging around your neck for a long walk. Sunglasses, always keep a lookout if you can for a pair of polarized sunglasses. You don't have to spend too much money on them. They get in all kinds of brands now and you might just want to use these for your expedition cruises because they really cut through the glare of the water and you can see creatures just below the surface of the water which you can't with conventional sunglasses. So it's a great little thing to have. All your chargers, your batteries and battery chargers and adapters are obviously going to need to get packed and your own little first aid kit with your essentials and your day-to-day -day medication, maybe something for motion sickness. Um, of course, your hand sanitizer, you want your sunblock, you want your insect repellent, and don't forget lip protection. Some of these places are much warmer and uh, it's much more sun exposure, but also they can be much drier than what you're used to and your lips tend to take a beating. In the temperate, we have places that are notorious for midges or other insects, and you might want to take your insect protection a step further by getting a head net, and uh, this could be particularly useful if you are expecting to spend a lot of time around wetlands and birding. Uh, these head nets, um, they'll be worth a lot of money if you have one and everyone else doesn't. <laughs> All of this needs to get wrapped up into a shore bag, something that's waterproof. You can get lightweight waterproof bags and more heavyweight waterproof bags if you're protecting camera equipment. Very handy to put it in something that also has a backpack strap so that you can be hands-free when you're walking down steps towards the zodiacs. And you'll want to avoid those mesh types of sections because those really pick up seeds and a little bit of biological material that we don't want to spread from island to island or even from landing to landing. So that's it for our temperate packing tips. Uh, try and be as efficient as you can, given it could be warm, could be cold, and everything else in between, all on one day. We look forward to seeing you out there on your next temperate itinerary.